Hello and welcome to another video. So in this video we'll be carrying on with the upgrades for the next prototype of the powered armoured exoskeleton. Carrying on from the previous videos where we did the upgrade for the shell, for the armour on the arm for example, as well as for the shin like in the last video. But in this week's video we'll be tackling the chest plate. Now there are plenty of things that I learned on this that I wouldn't have been able to find out without actually doing a fully armoured version first. I use that one there. While I did do a full mock-up first, what I found is the way and the type of material that I started to use started to heavily dictate what I could do, where I could put stuff, how everything could work. So first of all, we'll go over what I learned with that prototype and then we're going to CAD and make the new shell and get it printed out. So onto the old Mark IV prototype, we'll take the pouches off and the groin pad off so we can see the chest plate clearly as it is now. And now you can truly see how rough this actually is. The thing is, it was once starting to look pretty clean, it was gonna have a layer of clear colored carbon fiber over the top of the ceramic and it was all gonna look nice. The problem is, as soon as I tried it on, I realized I was gonna have to modify it heavily from what it once was. Namely, cutting down the insides of here so you could definitely reach across over your arms. I believe I also had to V the neck out a little bit more around here and then change the way the waist system worked and how it attached onto the back plate as well, as well as changing to Velcro straps to actually attach it with compared to the magnetic latches that I intended on doing originally. So when I was planning this video, I was actually struggling on where to start because there's so many little things to try and cover. So I'm actually going to start at the strapping because it's basically the simplest thing to cover. Originally, what I intended on doing is having magnetic latches. So you just close the chest plate down, which is hinged at the top, and it all just neatly latches into place. The problem is that the latches are basically guaranteed to either break, bend or snap off. The issue is as soon as any part of the arm armour, particularly like this back piece of the tricep then catches the magnetic latch it just takes it straight off or bends or breaks it now you can of course make it out of stronger materials whether that's stainless steel or forged carbon fiber or something but regardless it will break off in the end because you just can't drill this armor i had to drill four holes in this armor for pieces that i couldn't get around of and it took me two hours to drill four holes it's basically because you go in between ceramic and then kevlar and ceramic and then kevlar the drill bit for the ceramic gets clogged up in the Kevlar and then the drill bit for the Kevlar won't go through the ceramic and blunts on the ceramic so it's just a mess. So you have to bond whatever latch or mechanism you're going to do, you have to bond it on. Which basically means you can't really use magnetic latches. So I just went with standard Velcro straps that can strap onto the back plate and then strap over the front plate. It's easy to use, easy to get hold of, it doesn't get in the way of your arms at all and you can also hang pouches over the top of it. So I'll be carrying that forward on the next prototype. Now, if we go over the top here, you can see what's left of the hinges between the hammer that holds the helmet in place and some of these wires here. So all of this is incredibly bodged and rough and it's down to the amount of times I tried to change it. So again, you can't drill these pieces if they've got ceramic involved. So you have to try bond some form of hinge system in. I did try Velcro and even some belts to use basically as fabric hinges to hinge over the side of here. Good in theory, but when you count the entire weight of the chest plate itself up and apply it, they soon start to tear off where or just basically stretch. So they're not suitable for it either. Again, that is something that I wouldn't have been able to tell if I didn't make a fully armored prototype. So it does need regular mechanical hinges in place here and here to allow the chest plate to rotate up which does mean it'll need fixing points. And I think on the next version, I'm just not gonna bother putting ceramic in here because it's now so narrow to get it to fit well on the user. It's barely covering anything. So I just think it's pointless doing it. However, if that and that is all just carbon fiber, it'll be much easier to have better fixing points on the next prototype. Now I tried to get a good angle on the chest plate. So to make it easier to lay the ceramic tiling in, I do want to keep the curves as simple as possible. So what I did on this, which worked quite well, is basically have this piece that runs in one direction and this piece that runs in another direction. And then there's just a seam line of ceramic there, which I did cut a few custom pieces for that line, but because 
doing it like this does mean the chest plate comes out a bit to there. I actually had plenty of room inside to do an overlapping layer to make sure there were no gaps along that seam line. That made it much easier to put together and something I'll be carrying forward. The main thing I learned on this is really what to do with the waist. I had a few different ideas and designs and very few of them worked. Hence why this chest plate is actually quite short. Now, if I zoom in a little bit, you can kind of see here how this was once a separate plate. So you can see how it was had lines down here and here. So the idea was that this flap that runs along here would lift up. It all had overlapping pieces. So you had complete coverage, despite the fact it was on a Kevlar hinge all the way across. You can actually see the slight line where the Kevlar hinge was, or at least where it started. So the idea was I then have a separate waist piece that attached to the spine and these would allow more movement by rotating up a bit as you bent down so you'd get full movement, but you won't sacrifice any coverage. Now I'll also put some pictures up of this where I can. However, this was the original design for the waist piece to cover that midsection and to allow something to attach onto this to cover the groin. This was also once a lot deeper than this and it did have some of these pieces that went on the bottom of it. You can see how it had the overlapping flap. With the idea being that these flaps would attach onto there, all overlap, so that it had full coverage of the waist. The problem is with this is, as you can imagine, when it's in armor, when it's in foam, it's fine. But when it's in armor, you need a really strong hinge system on the sides of it to allow it to hinge open so you can get into it and then close shut and tight. And especially with the aforementioned issues about try to drill this armor, it basically was just never gonna work. No matter what I tried to do, I had far too much sag in it when I rotate it out sideways, even when this was possibly double the thickness. It also added way more bulk to it as well. And you can just see here where it would have fit, but unfortunately it was just too heavy, too bulky, and therefore was not meant to be. One thing that was correct on this by accident almost is the shape of the chest plate here. The fact that it goes up in the middle, I did realize when I had the legs on, that was a benefit because it basically reduced the chance of the thighs hitting the chest plate when you went to sit down. So I will be carrying that forward. However, I do want the chest plate to come further down, maybe to about here. The legs are gonna come up a little bit higher as well to close the gap. But nevertheless, I think the chest plate is gonna come down between two and four inches further down around to there. That then comes in line with the back fleece here. However, because I started off with the chest plate this big, I can't work that out until I actually try it on. So I'm gonna to have to come up with a way on this next chest plate where I can trim it down effectively and easily once I've worked that out. I did just quickly want to go over this, which has been in the background of my videos as well. This is the first version that I tried to just 3D print the casings to see how it came out in two millimeters. I also had a different idea with this that I was gonna do basically ring pieces that would go around the edge of the plate. So when I laid the armor in, it'd be easier to trim around the edges. And then I'd just fasten the rings onto the sides to make it all neat. However, because there's just not that many pieces that are now interlocking with other pieces, I'm not too bothered if there is a little bit of a jagged ceramic line around the edges. So I will just be shelling it as one piece. And I'm gonna be trying to 3D print it in a different manner because I ended up doing it in a way with a lot of supports on this one. And as you can see, it's extremely rough. I also want to try to add some details to make it look cool as normal. So with that being said, we'll go into Fusion 360 and start cadding the new design. So here we have that original CAD drawing where I basically just copied the Mark IV prototypes dimensions and put them into CAD. See, it's very simple which in general is good to be honest. The main thing I'm gonna modify from this perspective is I'm gonna add a little bit of a taper onto the bottom. Now it doesn't need that waist piece to go underneath it. I'll also be adding a degree of curve to the bottom here. However, I'm gonna to have to do it in kind of two parts. So you've got two different sections to cut away if needed. And I want to add some interesting details onto here. So we'll get it done and then take a look at what it looks like. And like magic, it's done. So. Around the middle here, what we have is we have areas for the straps to sit. I just kind of wanted to have a ridge line so I knew exactly where the Velcro would be going, that being 100 mil tall. And then what we've got on the bottom is we have the curve at the bottom copied over. But I've got two ridge lines, I believe I had them 50 millimeters apart. 
So if it's not too long as a full piece, I can just cut these pieces off here. But if it is too long at that point and it does restrict movement, then I can cut this piece out here. What I've done for the back of this is add the shell at this point. So these will essentially create this inner ridge line, making it easier to cut a section off before I, of course, lay the ceramic into it and the Kevlar and everything else. I'll be able to decide how much needs cutting off before I get to that point. And then I did want to try add some interesting detail to it, kind of keeping with the Roman-esque vibe that I added in onto the arm piece. This is a phrase in Latin. I'm not going to tell you what it says. I thought I'd leave it as a quiz that you can try to tell me what it is in the comments below, with a hint being that it's got quite 40k Mechanicus vibes. Scrolling out again, we've got these holes in select places all over. So these holes up at the top is for any potential mantle or top of a gambeson that has to go over the top of the helmet, any kind of hood. Just having holes that I can then put no inserts in, even if it's just as a reference point, will be very helpful. Then we've kind of got the same deal here, although these will be for pouches. Even if these are just no inserts to be used, essentially to attach Velcro over the top to then Velcro pouches on. Again, it's just a lot easier having these holes 3D printed in, so you know exactly where they are and you've got all the dimensions of them as a reference point. Same goes for in this middle part here. And then these holes above the curve are to add any sort of groin pad on. Hence why they're doubled up on both parts here. Obviously, some of them will get cut off, some of them won't. This will also fit nicely into the back piece that I've already pre-modeled. So with that said, we'll get printing and see what it looks like in real life. And this is the 3D print that came out. It was a bit of a mixed bag, to be honest, because I had a couple of failures in a couple of points, but I didn't have time to try reprint over and over. In general, I say it came out right. I might just have to reprint a few pieces. So this piece, for example, did fail along here, and I basically had to cut this top part again. Also, for some reason, it failed along this ridge line before I attached it together. Hence why there's a lot more glue gun here than somewhere else. In general though, I'd say the details and everything that needed to be came out all right. Including the old Latin signature there. The shell on the inside also came out as expected. So you can see how you've got these that have been cut off. So we'll offer it up to the old prototype and see what it looks like against that. I hope you'll be able to see this correctly. It's actually quite tricky to kind of fit all of this in, especially with the lighting that I have at hand. But I thought this would be the best way to do it. So I've got my contrasting hoodie on so you can kind of see. So you can see how it fits pretty well, which I'd expect because it's basically copying that one, which in the end it did fit pretty well after I'd modified it. You can see how far down it pretty much comes. You can see how you've got good movement across all of the front. One thing I always try to add in with this chest plate is that I'd have enough room underneath to fit an additional plate if I wanted. So if I wanted to buy just a regular plate carry plate, add some fixings on the inside, I'd always have the room to do so. That way you can up armor the chest plate very easily. If I just hold that up to there, you can kind of see where that'll land and hopefully you'll be able to see where it lands on my legs as well. And in general, pleased with the design. It's just the fact that the print didn't come out as well as I'd like it to. But I haven't decided whether to just fettle this print up or to keep reprinting until it comes out right. But it's certainly a marked improvement over the previous 3D printed prototype, which I'll just offer it up to there so you can see the improvements from that point of view. So you can see here how it's come out way better. You obviously don't have all of the support marks on it and it did even fit together a lot better than that one anyway. So I'm certainly happy with this design and all of the details that I've added to it, all of which will make it far easier to make the next one and make the next one look pretty good. Again, it's just whether I try to keep reprinting this or I just fettle this up to look good because it's all gonna get painted anyway at some point. And with the chest plate upgraded, we're now nicely getting through all of these armor casing upgrades. The next episode for the casing upgrades will be, I think, the boots, where I might also add in the boot treads that I did last time. But I've got a little bit of a better way to make them than what I did last time. And I think I'll also include in that video the back section of this. It's kind of not enough for its own video. So it should mix in with the boots fairly well time-wise. 
And then at that point, I will probably make a 3D printed exoskeleton, pretty much just to hang all of these pieces on to make sure they all fit as expected, which I'm very, very, very confident they will. As from the exoskeleton perspective, it's basically the same as what's on that, just perhaps made a little bit better in certain areas. But on the plus side of that, by the time I've 3D printed those parts and made sure everything lines up correctly, I hopefully will have enough money to buy all the carbon fibre and the Kevlar and everything I need to build the next prototype. And I should also be further along with the electronics by then. With that being said, if you would like to follow along, please like and subscribe, as I hope to see you in the next video. Lastly, thanks for watching and have a great day.